What is happening guys, I'm TechSource. Welcome back to another PC build on the channel. You know, since AMD is on an ass kicking streak, I thought we can celebrate this joyous occasion by doing an all AMD build with a black and orange color scheme. Let's get started. So not only will I be doing an all AMD build, but I'll be using AMD's new parts as well, starting with their processor. We are going with AMD's new Zen 3 processor, the Ryzen 9 5900X. It's a 12 core, 24 thread processor, and it is currently the fastest 12 core desktop CPU in the market that sits right above the 8 core 5800X. When looking at productivity benchmarks, the 5900X performs significantly better than the 10900K in various applications. Uh, one thing to note is that the 5900X does have two more cores than the 10900K, but it is priced at the same. But when it comes to gaming benchmarks at 1080p, the performance is very similar to the 10900K when we look at an 11 game average benchmark from Hardware Unboxed. However, there are titles that the 3900X does much better in and vice versa for the 10900K. But for the price, it just makes sense going with the 5900X since it does offer two additional cores to work with. Now, cooling the CPU is the new Pure Loop AIO from Be Quiet. And if you guys can't tell already, we are sticking to mostly Be Quiet parts, who is also awesome enough to sponsor this video. We're gonna see just how well the cooler will perform once I overclock the CPU at the end of this video. Speaking of which, there's only one soulmate that belongs with the Zen 3 processor, and that is the big Navi GPUs. How do, you, how do you open this box actually? So the goal of this PC is to game over 100 FPS in maxed out settings in 1440p resolution. And that is why we're going with the RX 6800 XT, which is AMD's fastest GPU currently in the market, at least until the 6900 XT gets released. The 6800 XT is AMD's answer to Nvidia's 30 series GPUs and a gateway into higher refresh rate gaming at higher resolutions. It is the direct competitor to the RTX 3080 and with an 18 game average benchmark, it did perform better than the 3080 in both 1080p and 1440p resolutions while slightly underperforming in 4K. But do keep in mind this card costs $50 less. By the way, huge shout out to Hardware and Box for these detailed benchmarks. If you guys want to see more graphs on these cards, I'll drop a link to his video below. I've been a huge fan of the B450 Tomahawk from MSI and I've had nothing but good experiences with them, so it just made sense to go with their newer version for this build. Now for memory, I looked through my inventory for the fastest sticks I can find and it didn't take long for me to decide on which ones to go with. We got the Crucial Ballistics Max Memory, a total of 64 gigs running at 4400 MHz. Damn! That is not a typo. I've actually used these in the 3090 build and I was blown away by the, uh, the performance of these and how easy it is to overclock. So these are the fastest RAM sticks I have in the office and I think they're worthy enough for this build. Now for storage, I decided to throw in a single eight terabyte M.2 SSD just for fun. Why not? I mean, this is gonna be plenty of storage for all my applications and games. And it's actually been sitting in the office for a couple months now. So I thought I can find some good use for it. Powering the PC is quite possibly the sexiest power supply in the market, which we won't even see because of the power supply shroud. Yes, I know guys, 1200 watts is absolutely overkill for this build, but you know, be quiet offered to send it over and who am I to say no to something that's sexier than I am. And besides, their new Dark Power Pros are only available in either 1200 watt or 1500 watt anyways. Otherwise, I would have just requested a 750 or an 800 watt power supply since that is all we need to juice up the system. But let me just say how gorgeous this power supply is. It has this elegant sharp corner design with a full mesh front panel covering a frameless silent wing fan that is super quiet. If I wasn't married, I would probably be sleeping with this power supply, no joke. And finally, we are building inside the Be Quiet Pure Base 500 DX. It's a good looking ATX case built with a high airflow intake front panel, as they call it, and with a tempered glass side panel with USB type C connectivity. It also comes with plenty of cable management support in the back and three included 140 millimeter Pure Wings 2 fans, all for $100, not a bad deal at all. If you guys must know, the total price of this PC is a little over $4,000. Oh my God, look at the price of the M.2 SSD. This is clearly not a realistic price of the build, right? I mean, if we take out the ridiculous M.2 SSD and go with a cheaper PSU, the total cost of the PC would be closer to around $3,000, which makes more sense. Any whoosies, these are all the parts I'll be using for the build. So let's go ahead and bring the black borders in, cue the music and begin the montage. Oh, <laughs> 
All right, so the AMD PC is finally done, and I'm liking it. I'm actually liking it. It's not too heavy on the RGB lighting. In fact, I think it's more of like a mature, sophisticated PC as I try to stay with just orange lighting to complement the AMD color scheme. And the, uh, the red accents on the GPU actually didn't turn out to be that noticeable with the side panel on. And I just love how the Radeon logo on the GPU pops through the side panel. All in all, it looks stunning, but I care more about what you guys think, so let me know in the comments section. I normally don't talk about overclocking performance since most of you don't care about that, but for this specific build, I wanted to mention a few things. For starters, I was able to easily obtain the 4400 MHz overclock on the memory by enabling the XMP profile, and I managed to overclock the 5900X to 4.7 GHz while keeping the voltage on auto. Unfortunately, that didn't bring any extra performance for gaming. In fact, in some games, I was down a few FPS, and that's because the CPU was able to achieve a much higher boost clock on stock settings. So for gaming, it's not worth overclocking the CPU. However, for CPU intensive tasks, it's a different story. I ran the Cinebench R20 benchmark and got a score of 8273 on stock. But after the overclock, I was able to add an extra 878 points. It's not record breaking or anything, but it's a nice 10% increase for free. This will be extremely effective in exporting video, 3D modeling, streaming, or any CPU intensive tasks. Of course, this does come at a cost, higher temps. We're looking at sub 50 degrees C on the CPU while idling with a max temperature of 73 degrees while exporting out a video for 30 minutes. However, after overclocking, the CPU's max temperature peaked at 100 degrees C with a max core voltage of 1.3 volts. A relatively small price to pay for extra performance indeed, but I do want to point out that the system didn't crash at all during the benchmarking, nor did it lag or stutter in any of the applications or games I used. These silent wing fans from Be Quiet suck. And I mean in a good way. They suck so good, just like my... Uh, Let's not go there, actually. They might not have any RGB, but they sure as hell deliver in performance. I would say that these are one of the quietest fans I've ever used in my life. In fact, this is the quietest PC you've ever built on the channel to date. This is what the PC sounds like overclocked on full load with max fan speed. Now, in terms of GPU performance, let's start with the temps. The 6800 XT sitting pretty under 44 degrees C on idle. However, in gaming, it gets a bit toasty, spiking up to 80 degrees Celsius. In terms of gaming performance, the 6800 XT did pretty well in the games I was playing. I was able to achieve over 100 FPS in maxed out settings in 1440p. And compared to the RTX 3080, it actually does noticeably better in 1080p when looking at an 18 game average benchmark. However, the gap between the cards narrows down quite a bit in 1440p and 4K resolution. However, it does cost $50 less than the RTX 3080, so in terms of value, it's exactly where it belongs. I also wanted to try out the SAM feature on these cards, also known as Smart Access Memory, which is said to increase the gaming performance. To enable this feature, I had to visit the BIOS Advanced Settings, go into PCI Subsystem, and enable Resize Bar. And with much disappointment, I didn't see any noticeable gains on the games I tested. However, other people have reported noticeable gains on select titles. But overall, I would say I'm really happy with the performance of the AMD system. I also had a lot of fun building inside the Pure Base 500DX from Be Quiet. It's got tons of space for expandability, it's got great airflow, and I just think it's a really great looking case. I'll drop a link to all the parts used right below the like button if you guys want to check it out. Thanks so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you very soon in the next one.